Void items are pretty cool. We all love them, but don't you agree that there's not enough? I love this game, but one thing I was disappointed about in the Survivors of the Void DLC was that the number of void items was way lower than I expected. Only 14 in total. Initially for this video, I was planning to make a void item for every item that didn't already have one, and I did, but if I were to put every single item I made in one video, it would be really long and repetitive. I don't know if I'll do a video for the other rarities, as this video took a lot out of me and I've been working on it for upwards of six months at this point. Let's get into it already. There are 23 items that do not have existing void variants, so that is how many I'll be showing you today. Also, look forward to some of these having logbook entries voiced by some of the community, as well as, finally, their own 3D renders. Naming these void items was pretty difficult, but at least I tried. Our first item corrupts all armor-piercing rounds and is inspired by the Hunter's Harpoon, High Explosive Rounds. Killing a boss grants a temporary buff that increases your maximum health by 10%, plus 10% per stack, and base damage by 5%, plus 5% per stack. The buff lasts 30 seconds and can stack. AP rounds have always felt a little restrictive and niche. It's nice to have, but most other types of damage increasing items just do its job far better. This allows for a nice little reward, especially in the later levels. Defeating a boss that could really help you deal with the honestly more scary non-boss enemies. I like to imagine that the various phases of Mithrix would count as separate bosses, allowing you to go into the later phases with that extra boost. The backup magazine is going to turn into the spare rounds. Every ability has a 10% plus 5% per stack chance to duplicate 0.2 seconds after activation. Duplication can only happen once per cooldown cycle. To explain what that means, the duplicated ability would not duplicate again on itself. And to clarify what I mean by a cooldown cycle, it would be the length of one cooldown of that ability. This would include any reductions you have, such as having an alien head. If an ability is reset early by something like the bandolier, it would not allow for another duplication until that original timer ran through. The duplication would have the same cooldown of the ability. Bison steak was probably the toughest to name. What I ended up coming up with was rather morbid. Lemurian cutlet. Gain 20% plus 10% per stack, increased healing, when above 60% health. I just like this idea for a common item. It just feels like it makes sense. Rewarding the player for playing safe and giving them a nice safety net is the basic idea here. I also like the item tie-in of the ceremonial dagger in its 3D render. I really should have listened to those videos for Bravo Guides that showed us when we started this whole program, but the repetitive commercial music in the background and the droning voiceover was so annoying, though, so... I really didn't learn anything. Four weeks after the crash, I ate the last good of food packets. I, I swear the cup of noodles were keeping me sane, but six weeks and I was down on my last three nutrient bars. They said they're supposed to keep you fed for three days, but maybe these ones are expired? I, I find food and water occasionally in the wreckage, but I just know it's not enough. I can't keep going on if all I can eat are these scraps. I know that one of these days, but at least in terms of feeding myself, I'm gonna have to get my hands dirty. The bundle of fireworks is an item I didn't want to lose the feeling of using. It turns into the Patriotic Sparkler. Upon using an interactable, 15 plus 5 per stack sparks will fly in random directions 10 meters from the interactable that deals 60% damage and stuns smaller enemies. The basic idea was instead of the heavy hitting cross map damage of fireworks, we instead get a small stunning explosion that deals more damage. Probably worse than the original, but it could be exciting to metagame the barrel that's in the middle of the teleporter fight. It's like, for sure not worth taking, but it could be cool nonetheless and would likely be really strong when it worked. Some of these items weren't exact opposites from their original forms. Maybe they should have been, but I think the most obvious answer is sometimes the most boring. This next item is an example of this and corrupts the Cautious Slug. Fractured Snail. Natural health regeneration increases over time by 2% plus 2% per stack per 3 seconds when out of combat up to a maximum of 40%. I really like the idea of how this would work and how it would really reward the safer players. I was considering increasing the maximum via the stacks, but I 
decided I was happy with having its maximum stacks be at 20. An opposite of the crowbar is another one that's way too obvious, so I instead went with how the crowbar rewards high damage attacks, and made its opposite instead reward repetitive low damage attacks. Allen Wrench Complex. Each consecutive hit on an enemy does 1%, plus 1% per stack, caps at 150%, increased total damage against that enemy. 1% doesn't sound like a lot, but try to think about how crazy this might be with characters like Multi and how they would be able to absolutely shred some higher health characters. This one is also for sure my favorite 3D model, as it's exactly what I had in mind. It's just a bunch of Allen wrenches, all glued together. Management has officially lost their minds. I swear, every time I find a new shipment of a new tool we're supposed to use to make this ship, it's always something weird that we never end up using. But this? This amalgamation of metal? Offense against God, an absolutely bewildering test right of a tool? This is cross the line. I'm going to put in another word to management about sending us any semblance of a guide or instruction manual on what we are supposed to do with this thing, because right now, it's just more junk for the junk drawer. The delicate watch is a very cool and strong item, so I certainly tried to do it justice. Faulty stopwatch. Killing an enemy has a 2% plus 2% per stack, caps at 60%, chance to drop an item. One stack of this item breaks after 10 item drops. I think this would be really cool, especially if you found it early. I think the item dropped would have the same rarity range of a normal chest, and possibly give better loot the more luck you had or the longer you were alive. Some of these names I did have fun with though, and possibly my favorite of the names I made was the energy drink variant. 5,017 hour energy. Increase your jump height by 5% plus 5% per stack. There aren't very many jump height increasing items other than the hopu feather and the head stompers, and I think that's a missed opportunity. I'd like to see a new pillar skip variation on commencement that would just involve having 50 of these or something like that. The void variant of the focus crystal seemed like it would be very obvious as to what it was going to be, so I wanted to avoid that. I think what I came up certainly avoided this. Boggy Crystal Ball. Deal 400% plus 100% per stack total damage to the farthest enemy from yourself in line of sight if there are at least 10 enemies on the map. The enemy is marked by a directional arrow around your character. The obvious answer I thought was just deal damage to enemies that are far away, but I didn't want to make this item just do that, so I decided to go a more complicated route. This would be fun to work around due to the line of sight requirement. You could try to manipulate your positioning in the environment to only see an enemy you wanted to, to get the most out of this item. The next item version for the gasoline, however, I did kind of go with the obvious route. Overshaken aerosol can. 10% chance to cause a frozen explosion around an enemy that deals 300% plus 150% per stack damage and freezes enemies, executing them at 20% health or lower. This version honestly might be better than the base gasoline purely because of its crowd-controlled capabilities. This would allow for a nice breather during a tense boss fight and would certainly help deal with the smaller enemies. You probably notice that this item does not activate on kill but instead on hit, which I don't know how to feel about, but it just feels right. Security camera audio recording. Location, storage wing of the UES safe travels. Voices identified, Melissa Hartage, coordinations assistant manager. Aya Fujiwara, medical staff. Date and time, 8-14 December 18th, 2054. Begin tape. Hey, hey. Wait up with that. I heard it was dangerous. This? It's just an old hairspray can. Captain had this as one of his nostalgia pieces. Supposedly they were banned in the 80s or something. Part of the reason the ozone was all messed up. But we fixed that, so what's the issue? It's the pressurized air inside it. That thing could explode at any minute if you're not careful. I'm not too worried. This thing is like... 80 years old, there's no way it hasn't depressurized at least a little bit. Besides, I'm kind of like a doctor. If it does explode, I'm sure I'll be able to handle it. If you say so. I just don't want to be a witness when you lose a hand from holding that thing when it goes off. I don't like your use of the word when there. And it seriously isn't that dangerous. Besides, there are tons of weapons on this ship. This spray can should be the last of your concerns. 
and tape. For any anti-vaxxers watching my videos for this next one, this item corrupts all medkits. Spent vaccine cartridges. One second after taking damage, poison all enemies within 10 meters for 5% plus 5% per stack, damage every 0.1 seconds for 5 seconds. This can only happen once per 2 seconds. For those of you who either can't or are unwilling to do the math here, each individual instance of poison would deal a maximum of 250% damage per stack. This would be cool to run on Engineer, and would also work great with some death marks. This next item might be a little strong, but I still like the concept nonetheless. This item corrupts all mochas, slow roasted coffee beans. Increase your armor by 1, plus 1 per stack, per 2% increased movement speed from your other items. To clarify, one Paul's Gotiv gives you plus 14% movement speed, so with only one stack, you would get seven armor. This would be really good late game, and I can imagine myself being really excited to see a printer for this mid game. My guilty pleasure is on kill items. The feeling of tossing a forgive me please and completely destroying the entire map is super satisfying, and I want to continue that with this next item. This item corrupts all monster tooth. Devouring Fang. On kill, enemies drop a fang that deals 30% plus 30% per stack damage and stuns for 0.5 plus 0.5 per stack seconds to enemies within 5 meters. This one might be a bit weak, but so is the monster tooth to be honest, so I don't feel too bad about it. There really isn't much to talk about either, so I will move on to the next item at once. While the oddly shaped opal is a very good item that has saved me more times than I can count, I always found it kind of boring. There isn't much of an incentive to stack it, and I always thought that was silly. So. With its void item counterpart, I wanted an item that followed the niche of being activated with the first of something. Marble Tesseract. Your first hit on an enemy deals 100% plus 75 per stack, more damage. Upon killing an enemy through this method, your kill is shown in a kill feed at the top right of the screen. Pressing the interact button within 3 seconds of a kill from this item will record the play, up to 3 clips per run. It's simple, but I kinda like it. It's a better version of the crowbar that doesn't punish you for having drones that whittle down enemies below 90% health. This would activate much like the void sent flame, and would be very fun to use on loader. Ignore the second half of this item's description, by the way, I'm writing this at 6am, and I just think that's funny. Audio snippet of recording from debrief of test subject 11506 from the Europa Theoretical Physics Lab. Begin audio. How would you describe touching the object? How could I describe it? It's like a part of it invaded me, grabbed a hold of me, and shoved me into whatever reality it occupied. Everything stretched out towards infinity. I experienced everything between my birth and my death at the same time, forever. Not only that, but I could see the timeline of everything. It made no sense and all the sense at once. I saw disasters, altruism, progress, destruction, I saw our fate, infinite lines converging at a singular point where the entire universe had died. In a more succinct form, how would you describe your experiences in the fourth dimension? It would be a disservice to describe it in any amount of words short of an anthology. This next item is a two-parter. One thing I never liked is items that you can break not having any way to either get them back or to get any value out of once they are broken. I get it's supposed to punish you, but I don't know, I always saw it as a missed opportunity. This item corrupts all personal shield generators. Void Scent Armor Set. Gain 30% plus 30% per stack, linear, of your maximum health as temporary shield that cannot be healed. All stacks of this item break and become a stack of Forgotten Chainmail if your temporary shield is depleted. Forgotten Chainmail. Increase your shield regen by 5% plus 5% per stack. That's right, I'm adding a new kind of health in this imaginary update temporary shield. Temp shields would be exactly what it sounds like. It would go above all other health and below barrier, and would basically just act as extra max HP that cannot be regenerated. The forgotten chainmail might be a bit overpowered, but I like the way that it helps your shield regen faster. The power elixir is our next item, and is corrupted into the voidling gelatin. Gain an item that's rarity scales with in-game time upon dropping below 15% health. This item is consumed on use. I'm gonna be honest, I stole this from a mod I've seen, 
but it makes sense. This item would reward you for escaping dangerous situations and would help possibly make the old war stealth kit actually worth taking. Also, don't ask where the Voidling gelatin comes from. You don't want to know. The repulsion armor plate is by far one of the most boring items in this game. It just sits in the background, so for its Void variant, I wanted something more active. Kevlar Vest. After killing an enemy in less than three hits, gain 20 plus 10 per stack armor for 30 seconds. The idea here was to reward chaining kills with a high damage, low attack speed character. Successfully one-shotting something would allow you to have a bit of a safety net to continue barreling through everyone. So what are you getting up with? Go old Kevlar is what? Pardon me, Sergeant, but did you say Kevlar? You got a problem with that, Danny. No, Sergeant. It's just, I don't really understand. We have force fields, matter disintegration fields, state-of-the-art gravity plates, and you're strapping a bona fide relic to your chest? You know how many points of failure each of those things have? You can't hack or EMP Kevlar, son. Not to mention when you're gotten down the enemy, it really makes you feel invincible. I still don't get it. Rustling is heard from the sergeant's locker, before the private is heard catching something. Try it on. Promise it works. The rule of Penny's variant just ended up being funny. The idea here was to somehow cause the enemies to be jealous of how much money you have. Spent gift card. Gain a 20 plus 5 per stack meter field of guilt around you that slows enemies and makes them take increased damage relative to your current gold to a maximum of 99% slow and 80% increased damage taken. I'm not sure how the relative to your current gold bit would be calculated, but I imagine it would be related to how much a regular chest costs in that round. I love this item, and paired with a focus crystal, it would be super fun. I honestly don't even know where I was going with the Soldier Syringes variant, but I really like how it ended up. Kind of the opposite philosophy of the Kevlar Vest, rewarding players for killing enemies with lots of little hits rather than less big ones. Illegal Stimulant. Gain a buff that permanently increases base damage by 40%, plus 20% per stack, after killing an enemy with at least 30 hits. This buff stacks up to 3, plus 1 per stack times and is reset upon death. I like this because you kind of need to min-max having low damage but high attack speed to get the buff. The prerequisite might be too high, but I think it's balanced by needing many of this item to get its full value. Also, in case anyone was confused, all of the buffs would be reset if you died. If you had a Dios or a Pluripotent Larva, you would not keep your buffs from this item after resurrecting. Going back to the simple reverse of the original ideology, we have the Sticky Bomb. Implosion Capsule. Gain a 10% chance on hit to trigger an implosion on an enemy, pulling one plus one per stack enemy within 30 meters to them and slowing all affected enemies by 25%. This is kind of like a pocket primordial cube, and can help you solve the problem of enemies being too far from each other to get value out of things like gasoline. Originally this item did damage by slamming enemies together, but I didn't really think that it made any sense as making any damage higher than the sticky bomb would make this item always worth taking over the, its original. The stun grenade is another disappointing item in my opinion, and it never really helps that often. I wanted to keep to the theme of confusing the enemies, and here's what we ended up with. Acidic Smoke Grenade. Upon killing an enemy, release a 5 plus 2 per stack meter smoke cloud that blinds and deals 10% plus 5% per stack damage to enemies inside it. Each cloud lasts 8 seconds, and this item cannot proc itself. Originally, this item didn't deal any damage, but I think this would be really cool once you got like 10 stacks of it, when paired with some other base damage increasing items. If nothing else, it would be pretty devastating during a teleporter event. This one is pretty simple, but I still like it. The Topaz Brew becomes Dishonorable Discharge. Gain a 0.3% plus 0.3 per stack temporary barrier on hit. A bit of an obvious change from on kill to on hit, but I still enjoy this. It gives the four commando players something to keep them safe, I suppose. This item does what I think all void items should do. It works on some characters, but not all of them. So it's really up to the player or whether or not they want to pick it up or stick with the brooch. And last but not least, we have the war banner. Portable Pillar of Soul. Upon level up or activating a holdout zone, place a a pillar of soul that releases a slowing pulse that pushes enemies away within 18 plus 6 per stack meters once every 2 seconds. I like the idea of like basically having one of the pillars from the commencement to work with you. This item would be really funny because after enough of it, enemies would just be thrown off the map. 
maybe a little overpowered, but I love it nonetheless. And that's all she wrote. I hope you enjoyed my silly little video. Be sure to let me know what you thought of my item concepts, and tell me about your own ideas for what future void items could look like in the comments below. I can't wait to hear them. Also, I've hidden a secret socks emote somewhere in this video. The first person to find it and link the timestamp will get their comment pinned. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. If this video does well enough, I may just make another one for the other rarities of items. Thank you to our members Q3W3E3, Valento725, A Brief Gamer, Shadowchi, Supreme Firo, Soap, Eggy, Nia, and the underscore Radiance for supporting the channel like that. If you'd like to support the channel like they did, you absolutely can, but if you don't want to support me with your money, that's always fine. You can always just like, subscribe, join the Discord, or check me out on Twitch. Other than that, I will see you later. Bye-bye.